Good afternoon. My name is Jamie Monazon. I am the CEO of the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to Skyline College for our installation of officers and State of the City address. With our deepest gratitude, I'd like to thank our sponsors briefly. As you can see on the programs on your table and on the, the tents there, uh, we really couldn't put such a beautiful event together without the, our wonderful support from Artichoke Joe's, City of San Bruno, Google and YouTube, San Mateo Credit Union, Skyline College, and the Law Offices of George Corey. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite our vice mayor and a special guest, the official grandson of the, e e the day, Brendan Ruane, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, space this way. Please uh, join Brendan and I in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Ruain. At this time, I would like to recognize our city officials here today uh, and some of our county officials as well. Please just give us a little wave. These are the people working really hard in our county and our city to make it as great as it is. Mayor Jim Ruane, City Manager Connie Jackson, Vice Mayor Rico Medina, Council Member Canabera, Council Member Irene O'Connell, Council Member Michael Salazar, City Clerk Carol Bonner, Chief of Police, Neil Telford. Deputy Fire Chief, Dave Downing. City Attorney, Mark Zaffirano. Director of Community Development, David Waltering. Director of Community Services, Carrie Burns. San Bruno Cable, Steve Furpo. Director of Public Works, Clara Fabri. And without this person's help, I don't know how I could do my job. <laughs> Jennifer Dianos, who takes care of the management analysis. I would like to welcome from Assemblyman Dave Pine's office. Where, where did he go? I just wrote Assemblyman Dave Pine. Dave Berto, thank you. Also present today is Mark Hirschman from Senator Jerry Hill's office. Ben Cohn from As Assemblyman Kevin Mullen's office. Thank you all for being here today. And at this time, I'd like to welcome our 2013 amazing president and chairperson of the board, Kirsten Pinocchi. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jamie. And good afternoon, everyone. And again, thank you for being here. It's been my pleasure to serve as president and chairperson of the board for a second term this year. And this past year has been extremely exciting for the chamber. To highlight some of our accomplishments this year, we held our annual showcase of businesses at the shops at Tamfran. We had a home-based business fair. We had a multi-chamber business expo where we collaborated with other chambers in our area. We held concerts in the park where the chamber was represented and we held wine sales. We had Taste of San Bruno, again, another great event in our town. We had trick-or-treating on the avenue. We held a holiday boutique. We had educational seminars. We launched a new website, and that website's gonna continue to grow and provide great things for our community and our members. 
And speaking of members, we increased our membership by 40 new members. Yay, that's right. We held several grand openings and ribbon cuttings. We also had nine networking events this year, and the most highly attended was of course the YouTube Mixer, which I'm very proud that we were able to join ventures with YouTube and have a mixer there, so we appreciate their partnership. We also held a State of the County Address with Senator Jerry Hill, Assemblyman Kevin Mullen, and Supervisors Don Horsley and Dave Pine. It is now time for me to step down as president, but before I do, I would like to call up our current board of directors to properly thank them for the great job they've done this past year. Some of my board members are continuing for an additional term, and sadly, some of them have turned out and are moving on to other adventures. So board, please join me up here at the podium. Rosalind Yu, Michelle Enriquez Da Silva, Gwen Daly, Gina Mathers, Nicole Blanco is not here, Jim O'Dowd, Scott Hart, Robert Rico, Rico, excuse me, and Vince Solano. So I don't do this by myself and I don't, Jamie and I don't do this alone. It really requires a strong board. Some of these board members have chaired events. Some of them have been strongly represented in the community and they've gone out and gotten new members and, and really grown our chamber in this past year. So I see great things ahead in the future. I'm sad to see some of them go, but um, we've had a really good time and I thank you all for your support. So I wanna just thank you. So thank you all for your continued support in helping make the San Bruno Chamber what it is. With that said, I'd like to invite Mayor Jim Rowane to the podium to, prevent, uh, to present our State of the City Address. Thank you, Kirsten. Well, good afternoon to all of you and, and welcome. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here to participate in today's Board of Directors installation and to be able to share with you some of the exciting things going on in our community. First of all, I would like to recognize Skyline College for hosting today's luncheon for the second year. We truly appreciate the partnership with Skyline College that makes this beautiful venue available to all in our community. It's just one of the ways that Skyline contributes to San Bruno and we are also fortunate to have many more organizations in our community that, just like Skyline, contribute in many ways to making San Bruno the special place it is to live, work, and to do business. As I have often said, I am Jim Ruane, the proud mayor of the wonderful city of San Bruno. It is an honor to serve our community in collaboration with my fellow city council members, all of whom are here today, Vice Mayor Rica Medina, Council Member Irene O'Connell, Councilmember Ken Ibera, Councilmember Michael Salazar, also our city clerk, Carol Bonner. And there's two other people I noticed in the audience I would like to recognize, that's uh, Dave Canepa, the mayor of Daly City, and also Art Kiesel, a member of the Foster City City Council. <coughs> uh, together with our dedicated team of professional staff, several of whom are also here today, we are committed to provide our businesses and residents the broad range of services at the highest possible level. My comments this afternoon will showcase the city's important events and achievements of 2013. But looking forward, I also want to focus on some of the significant opportunities on the horizon for 2014. As we enter the new year, 2014, I am excited to announce that this will be a very special year for San Bruno. On December 23rd, 2014, and our city will celebrate its centennial anniversary of incorporation. When San Bruno officially incorporated as a municipality in December 1914, this was a small rural town of about 1,400 residents. Many of these early residents first arrived here as refugees from the devastating 1906 earthquake and fire in San Francisco. Finding this place to their liking, they stayed to build a brand new community. Early San, Fran San Bruno primarily, primarily business was agriculture with ranches, uh, providing food, dairy products, and flowers for the urban San Francisco population. Today, with our 42,000 plus residents, San Bruno is known as a community with a heart, renowned for our beautiful parks and friendly, well-kept residential neighborhoods, as a regional transportation hub, and now as a thriving high-tech business center. The city has come a long way over these past 100 years. 
The centennial year is a wonderful opportunity to recognize not only San Bruno's history and heritage, but importantly, it is a time to celebrate what San Bruno has become and where we are going. Our first major initiative in celebration of the city centennial is our Culture and Arts Commission's work to commission a mural to be installed late this year on the walls bordering Sneath Lane. A wide range of events and programs will be held throughout the community this coming year, including a centennial gala tentatively scheduled for early December and a community day at City Park. Within the next few weeks, a full calendar of events will be available on the city's website. On behalf of the entire City Council, I invite and encourage you to attend the events and programs over the coming months and join us in celebrating the very rich past and promising future of our city. To begin this year-long centennial celebration, we have some special items here today. I hope you will take a moment to enjoy the photographs around the room, showing San Bruno then and now. At each place at your tables, take a look at the San Bruno history and trivia cards. This will give you a head start for participating in the exciting events and activities that we are planning for our celebration this coming year. Looking back now at 2013, we see that the recent past sets the stage for an even more robust future. Improvement in the overall regional and national economy has provided growth and contributes to the strengthening financial outlook for our city. Increases in the city's sales tax and transit occupancy tax revenues demonstrate growth in the city's retail and hotel sectors. Signs of a recovering real estate market emerged throughout the entire community. Both residential and commercial developers are expressing renewed optimism, and the city is receiving numerous inquiries from developers seeking sites for rehabilitation and new construction. In our downtown, the city is working closely with an experienced Bay Area developer, Signature Properties, who is preparing an application to redevelop the former cinema building on San Mateo Avenue at the El Camino Real Gateway with a mixed-use residential and commercial project. We anticipate completing planning, design, and permitting this year for a three-story building with some commercial space on the ground floor and a total of 60 or more residential units. Redevelopment of this site has been a long time coming with some very disappointing fall starts over the last recent years. It continues to be a high priority for the city and for our downtown, so we are especially looking forward to seeing this project move forward as a first step toward implementation of our plans for comprehensive revitalization of our commercial areas. This comprehensive vision for our community is captured in the San Bruno Transit Corridors Plan that was adopted by the City Council this past year following several years of work and public engagement. This plan describes allowed land uses, development standards, and architectural guidelines for future development and redevelopment along our city's major commercial corridors, including El Camino Real, San Bruno Avenue, San Mateo Avenue, and Huntington Avenue. With full implementation, this plan will transform our city's commercial core in many positive ways and will encourage the development of attractive and architecturally interesting mixed-use buildings, vibrant shopping centers, new housing, and bicycle and pedestrian-friendly plazas and pathways. Our next step towards full realization of the plan's vision will include the City Council's consideration to place a measure on the ballot to establish new standards for building heights, parking garages, and residential densities. As we move forward in 2014 on this exciting project, your interest, involvement, and support as business leaders in this important community discussion will be very critical. Other parts of our city's commercial area also saw very positive new activity in 2013. The city is now processing an application for an approximately 68,000 square foot building in the Bay Hill Business Park to house the headquarters of the San Francisco Police Credit Union. This project at the site of the former TGI Fridays will complement and continue the strong presence of major businesses in Bay Hill, where not only larger high-tech businesses like YouTube and Walmart.com have their headquarters, but where many smaller successful technology businesses, including Responsus and Ironport, along with others, both large and small, find an attractive and welcoming environment for their business home. The city continues to progress towards the long-anticipated development of a select service hotel on the vacant one-and-a-half-acre city-owned parcel adjacent to Jack's Restaurant at the Crossing. <clears throat> the hotel is expected to be five stories in height, feature approximately 150 guest rooms and 3,000 square feet of meeting space. We expect to process the needed approvals for the hotel in 2014 with construction to begin right away thereafter. This project is important to San Bruno because it will provide much needed space for events, parties, and other business and social gatherings. 
This type of public space is not readily available in San Bruno, creating a real void for San Bruno residents and businesses who would like to be able to schedule their events right here near home. In the residential sector, we are pleased to see that the activity is also picking up. The final 12 units planned for the Skycrest neighborhood next door to Lunardi's are now under construction. These beautiful new luxury homes will complete the 24 unit subdivision as it was originally planned and halfway developed several years ago. Across the street, another project planned a few years ago at Glenview and San Bruno Avenue is now moving forward as well. The city is processing an application for a new neighborhood of 31 single family homes at this location and is anticipating the start of construction late this year. The 14 unit subdivision at Cedar and Pepper, the Cedar Mills project has been completed and all of the homes are sold and occupied. We are especially pleased to see the beautifully renovated 308 unit Pacific Bay Vistas apartment complex now being occupied. This luxury living environment with one and two bedroom apartments and many lovely new community amenities completely transformed the vacant and deteriorating complex that previously occupied this site at the top of the hill on Skyline at Sharp Park Road into a place that any of us would be proud to call home. In order to support new development and continue to position San Bruno for the future, the city is active in constructing infrastructure in several key areas of the community. We are most excited to now be seeing the final stages of the construction, finally, of the Caltrain San Bruno grade separation. It is wonderful to have this project over a decade in the making, now finally almost complete. Our nearby residents and businesses have been patient through the many years of disruption this heavy construction has brought upon them. So it was a welcome historic moment some months ago when trains first began running on the elevated structure, vastly improving safety for passengers, motorists, and pedestrians alike. Today we are only a few short months away from opening the new San Bruno station and full operation of this new gateway to San Bruno. As we speak, Caltrain is completing the station platform, ramps and staircases along with new lush landscaping that will put the finishing touches on the modern station. As part of this project completion, the city will dedicate an improved Posey Park in a new location with a magnificent water feature that is destined to become a popular gathering point at the northern entrance to our downtown. Elsewhere throughout the community, the city continues its commitment to work toward revitalization of our public infrastructure. In 2013, we completed the first phase of a comprehensive citywide sidewalk repair program to improve the quality and accessibility of sidewalks in our neighborhoods. Due to tree root growth and ground settling, sidewalks lift and become uneven, so this is a continuing issue for us. Our goal for 2014 is the repair of over 1,000 additional locations. Last year, we were also able to give the Civic Center a facelift by repainting City Hall, the library, and fire station number 51. This was a small project in the overall scheme of things, but an important one to demonstrate our community pride, not only in the appearance of our neighborhoods and businesses, but in our civic facilities as well. Less visible, but even more critical to the community's overall well-being as our continuing work to rehabilitate and replace our aging water and sewer systems. The City Council approved a comprehensive water system master plan last year and is in the final stages of completing sewer and stormwater system master plans. Sounds pretty exciting, but it is. <laughs> These plans outline critical priorities for necessary system rehabilitation to be completed over the next several years, as well as a long-term vision for system improvements to support the long-range growth of the city, as envisioned in our general plan. To ensure system reliability, we have begun rehabilitation of the college water pump station, which delivers water to Skyline College and surrounding neighborhoods. We have also begun design for rehabilitation of the Olympic wastewater pump station serving northern San Bruno, as well as for the replacement of water storage tanks serving the western neighborhoods of the community. In 2014, we will see additional progress towards our goal of replacing critical water and wastewater infrastructure over the next 20 years. Part of what makes San Bruno so special is not just our history or our heart, but our commitment to strengthening our community through our actions. Countless hours are volunteered by, ser volunteered by services, organizations, and individuals throughout our community support youth sports, senior programs, recreation activities, and city commissions, committees, and boards every year. This year, through the volunteer efforts of the San Bruno Lions Club, the Beckner Picnic Shelter at City Park was re-roofed and given a complete facelift. As part of San Bruno's ongoing commitment to environmental stewardship and continuing the community's tradition of leadership in environmental initiatives, 
the city took two important steps forward in 2013. San Bruno, along with cities throughout San Mateo County, adopted an ordinance limiting single-use plastic bags to better protect waterways and wildlife. This month, in coordination with Recology San Bruno, the city is rolling out an organics recycling program to all households and businesses throughout the community. You can see where Recology is sitting in the room over there, right? <coughs> now, as has been the case over the last three years, the final portion of my remarks today cover the considerable continuing work effort and the abiding focus that the city is devoting to the full rebuilding and restoration of our community in the wake of the devastating September 9th, 2010 PG&E gas transmission pipeline explosion in the Crestmore neighborhood. For San Bruno, it is not just the physical rebuilding of the neighborhood that is critical. We remain dedicated to assuring the community's full recovery from the impact of the disaster, including the critical priority that we do everything possible to assure that what happened that terrible day in our community never happens again anywhere ever. Thinking about our community centennial, I'm struck by the coincidence that exists in the fact that San Bruno, having originally established itself as a community in the wake of another devastating tragedy in 1906, is now on the eve of our 100-year anniversary, again facing the daunting challenges of recovery and rebuilding from tragedy. This time, though, there was and there are a very different set of issues and circumstances. What happened in San Francisco in 1906 was, for those pioneers, truly unpredictable and unpreventable. What happened here in 2010 could have and it should have been prevented. In 1956, PG&E installed junk pipe of unknown origin underground in San Bruno to transport flammable natural gas under high pressure. Without knowing what they had in the ground, for the next 50 plus years, PG&E failed to properly operate, inspect, and maintain that pipe, dangerously compromising the safety of our residents. The California Public Utili Utilities Commission, the CPUC, whose responsibility it is to regulate utilities in our state, failed to enforce proper regulatory and safety standards it would have raised necessary questions about the integrity of that pipe and could have prevented the tragedy we experienced. Instead, the CPUC chose a lax enforcement strategy that prioritized a cozy relationship with the regulated utility over the safety of the very residents they're responsible to protect. We expect that within the next few months, the investigative and penalty proceedings on the explosion that have been ongoing at the CPUC for over two years will be completed. That conclusion will happen when the Commission decides what amount of fine PG&E should pay and what additional new safety standards should be put into place as a result of what happened here and what has been learned since this explosion. You have probably seen the City of San Bruno in the news as a tireless advocate for reform of the CPUC to sharpen their regulatory focus on safety and for their action to hold PG&E fully accountable both for their past failures and for the full correction of the problems that led to the explosion. The City of San Bruno is strongly advocating that the largest possible fine be imposed. This will send a message on behalf of the citizens of California that future negligent utility management and operational practice will not be tolerated. We are also advocating that an independent monitor be established to assure that safety becomes a true priority in the CPUC's regulatory process. Our goal is to make tangible improvement that will ensure the same problems that led to tragedy here cannot happen again. San Bruno's future safety and that of other communities throughout California depends on this. Our team of dedicated legal and other experts continues to work with our staff on an everyday basis on these initiatives because we believe that real change is needed to assure real safety. This is the positive result that needs to come from our experience. We have all been immersed in the metrics of the processes in place that were and are supposed to keep us all safe. The studies, the investigations, the hearings, the oversight, or lack thereof, in assuring that the safety of conveniences and necessities that we should all be able to take for granted have consumed our time and attention. We owe it to those that lost their lives and those who have suffered so much to continue to be diligent and aggressive. In the Crestmore neighborhood itself, the city continues to support the residents who have chosen to rebuild their homes and return to the neighborhood. Of the 38 homes that were destroyed, 17 beautiful new homes have been rebuilt and the families have moved back home. 
Four additional homes are in varying stages of construction. Nearly all of these returning homeowners have participated in the city's Rebuild It Green program that provides grants for energy efficiency upgrades. Two homes are qualified as LEED Platinum, our nation's highest level of building energy efficiency. There are currently 10 vacant lots remaining in the neighborhood that are owned by the city or by PG&E and are planned for development of new homes. The city has recently completed a comprehensive and competitive solicitation and selection process to locate a qualified development company to build on these lots. In one of its final formal actions of 2013, the city council selected Castle Companies to construct the 10 new homes. These homes are anticipated to be completed and ready for sale and occupancy by early 2015. <coughs> Right about the same time, the city expects to complete our ongoing work to rebuild the entire Crestmore neighborhood infrastructure. New underground water, sewer and storm drain pipes have been completed in the fire damaged area and are now being constructed throughout the remainder of the neighborhood. This work will be followed by another project to resurface the streets and install new street lights and other above ground improvements, including the replacement of the small neighborhood park that was destroyed. The PG&E underground gas transmission line that exploded has now been finally and forever rendered unusable. Between Sneath Lane and San Bruno Avenue, the pipeline has been filled with concrete slurry so that it can never be used again. And lastly, in December, the city was pleased to host a reception to celebrate the inaugural meeting of the San Bruno Community Foundation Board of Directors. Since achieving a precedent-setting victory with our negotiation of a $70 million settlement with pg e in 2012, the city has worked to establish the foundation which is charged with responsibility for assessing community needs and determining the use of settlement funds for the long-term benefit of the entire San Bruno community. The city completed an extensive outreach process to identify community members to represent the community on the foundation's inaugural board of directors. After careful review of the 82 excellent applicants, the City Council selected seven persons to serve the community's interest in this exciting new capacity. As articulated in the Foundation's incorporation documents, the Board's work will be guided by its underlying purpose to benefit the San Bruno community through enduring and significant contributions to and investments in charitable and publicly owned community facilities and programs over the long term. In the weeks and months ahead, the Foundation will be seeking community input on goals and initiatives for use of these funds. We encourage you to participate. With this positive opportunity for community benefit, we look forward not only to the Foundation's work over the next year and beyond, but to our continuing progress down that long road to full community recovery. In closing, our continuing partnership with the Chamber and with our business community is vital to the future of San Bruno. I look forward to working with you in 2014 and in the years to come, and I encourage you as leaders in our community to remain engaged as we explore and capture the opportunities that lie ahead for all of us. You can be confident that our city team of staff, our dedicated volunteers, and the entire city council remain fully committed to the well-being and continuous improvement of the community we are all very proud to call home. Once again, I thank you for your commitment to San Bruno and for the invitation to speak with you today, and I wish you, on behalf of the entire city of San Bruno, a very prosperous 2014 centennial year. Thank you. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mark Hirschman of Senator Jerry Hill's office. Mark. Well, it is my great delight to be here uh, with you today on behalf of Senator Hill and uh, with Ben Cohn from Assemblymember Mullen's office. Uh, what an exciting time to be in San Bruno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your leadership uh, to the City Council, the City staff, uh, 100 years of Centennial to celebrate, and so many 
uh, exciting activities and things to look forward to, including the uh, Caltrain grade separation. Uh, it's great civic leadership uh, uh, that uh, makes San Bruno such a wonderful place. And it's, it's great volunteer and business participation, such as uh, that provided by the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce, and in particular, those who volunteer their service uh, on the chamber board. And so uh, it is our great delight. Uh, we have certificates of uh, recognition from the California State Legislature for those outgoing uh, board members. Do we want to recognize them here? Uh, um, and I'll let Jamie do the honors to call them up. Uh, the first. Excuse me. The first. The first uh, recognition goes to Kirsten Pinocchi. Completion of a very successful tenure as 2013 president of the board of directors of the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce. My best wishes to you, 2014 past president, in all your ongoing efforts at strengthening the San Bruno business community. On the seventh day of January 2014, Senator Jerry Hill. Our next is for Michelle Enriquez da Silva. <laughs> San Bruno Chamber of Commerce, 2007 to 2013, Board of Director. Um, the only reason she is going off is because our bylaws say we, that she has to, otherwise we'd keep her forever. So uh, the beautiful directories on the tables there were, that whole project was handled by Michelle. So she's done a phenomenal job. And again, warm regards for your service 2007 to 2013 as a member of the Board of Directors, also a past president of the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce and for your leadership as president during their tenure. Thank you for your valuable contributions to the vitality of San Bruno business community on this seventh day of January, 2014, Senator Jerry Hill. Our next recognition goes to Rosalind Yu. Rosalind has been a um, ch member of the board f since 2007, and again, someone who is being forced off because of our bylaws. Uh, warm congratulations to your important work 2007 to 2013 as a member of the board of directors of San Bruno Chamber of Commerce and for your service as our chief financial officer during your tenure. Thank you for your valuable contributions that strengthen the San Bruno business community. On the seventh day of January, 2014, Senator Jerry Hill. We have one for Nicole, but Nicole's not here. She's not here. So sounds like we need to change those bylaws. What you, yes. Yeah. And congratulations and, and happy birthday, uh, San Bruno. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'd like to bring up the mayor again. Come on up. And happy birthday also to uh, Andy Daly. He's over here. <laughs> Thanks for coming out on your birthday. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I'd like to call up the uh, officers and board of directors. Uh, the installation ceremony. We begin with the newly appointed board of directors, and will the following people please come forward? Um, Sherry Conlon, Patrick Nielsen, Barbara Einsiedel, and Dennis Sammet. And continuing on the board, please step forward uh, Kirsten Pinocchi, Gwen Daly, Vincent Solano, Jim O'Dowd, and Robert Riekel. And also to be sworn in today, a uh, person that's uh, very integral to this whole situation is the CEO and Chamber uh, Director, Jamie Montesan. Jamie? Yeah. 
We supposed to we supposed to raise your right hand or does it really? Why don't we have two sides? Yeah. Four and four. Yeah, balance it out a little bit. You look good. Okay. You have been elected to the Board of Directors of the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce. This honor reflects the caring that you have about San Bruno in general and in particular the success of its business community. Your fellow San Bruno Chamber of Commerce members have asked you to accept the challenge of leading the chamber and are placing their trust in you to move this organization forward and to work to accomplish its mission to promote and enhance the economic growth and vitality of San Bruno business and community. By accepting this challenge, you are committing yourself to the hard work that leadership entails. You will be responsible for ensuring the continued success of this 70-year-old organization. Do you all accept this commitment? Yes. 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 Did I, did, were all of them? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, well, Jim O'Dowd, will you please step forward? Jim, as incoming chairman of the board, it is my privilege, privilege to prevent, present to you a gavel as a symbol of office. And accepting this gavel and the leadership that it symbolizes, you are accepting the ultimate challenge of leading this organization in the areas you have chosen for this year. I know that your year will be successful and you will serve with distinction. Do you accept this challenge? I do. I do. Here's your gavel. Congratulations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present your newly elected Board of Directors of the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce. Congratulations to all, and you all may return to your seats. Jim, you're on. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, council members, ladies and gentlemen, I happen to be the oldest serving member of the board on the Chamber of Commerce. And a 27 year resident of San Bruno and business operator. And it's an honor today to become your chamber board chairman. After six or seven years on the board, I think it was pity that got me here rather than <laughs> whatever. I wish to take this opportunity to thank our outgoing directors for their time and their hard work over the past few years. You guys will be missed, you're awesome, no question about it. I also want to welcome our new directors. I look forward to working with you guys and getting to know you. I especially want to thank Kirsten, our outgoing president and chairperson, for her very hard work, dedication, and leadership. And I fully understand that I have some very difficult tracks to follow. But I feel with our awesome CEO, Jamie, our new board of directors, I'm up to the challenge. I look forward to and am ready to make some change. My vision for the coming year is to lead the chamber to growing and supporting its membership, promoting the benefits of becoming a President's Circle sponsor. There are ultimate um, benefits for anyone that wants to be a President's Circle sponsor and we intend to reach out and let every member and business owner understand these benefits. I personally like to reach out to our small businesses, especially our home-based businesses, providing them with educational seminars and networking events, working to make our already annual events bigger and better with the possibility of adding some new ones. Making every San Bruno a business aware that San Bruno is indeed a special place and that we truly have a heart and a very active Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for your time and attention. I look forward to a challenging but a very good year ahead. Guru Maigat.
That was great. Thanks, Jim. And congratulations, board members. I also look forward to working with each and every one of you for making the chamber even more awesome than it is today. And special thanks to Skyline College and Pacific Coast Dining for uh, the venue today and the food. I hope the food was good. Enjoyed the food. Good. I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to Linda Bertoli over there. She's over in the, off the side. She did a lot of work to get this going. And Teresa Tentis and also Sherry Collin of Skyline College. Thank you all for coming. And um, we're done. So I think, wow, we're done nice and early. Yay. <laughs> all right. So uh, enjoy the rest of your time. Thank you.